Hello, everybody. Welcome to the very first episode of the Multiphysics channel. This is the pilot. We will introduce you, I will introduce you to this new format for knowledge transfer at EMPA. And first of all, I want to show you something about myself. I'm Donato Rubinetti. I'm a mechanical engineer. That's my background. I have been doing a lot of modeling so far. So it was on CFD, on acoustics, on heat transfer, you name it. Many multiphysics models uh, involved as well. Um, at the uh, EMPA as a PhD student and also Kauleuven in Belgium. What I'm famous for is cheap sunglasses. I really, I don't know, but I've never spent more than 10 bucks for sunglasses. Even in that picture you see there, this one, uh, here this is a company giveaway gift from uh, one of the career talks we had some time ago. And two truths and one lie about me. So. I speak five languages, I'm 30 years old, and CFD is life. Guess which one is the lie? Good. So the Multiphysics Channel, as I mentioned before, what is it? The Multiphysics Channel is our new platform for knowledge transfer. It is being recorded. Every session we will have, as this one, will be recorded and put on YouTube and then on our website. So with the intention to build a knowledge base. In these videos, we will show you best practices, some aha moments we had in modeling, tips and tricks. And at the end, you can ask your questions. Uh, so then you unmute your mic and we will have a Q&A session. The Multiphysics channel is the product of the Multiphysics Hub. The Multiphysics Hub exists at EMP already. In our team, we provide contact hours, we do events, we have support for any kind of question that concerns uh, modeling. And we boost excellence in modeling at EMPA because in future also virtual and digitalization, uh, you know, uh, it will be more, more and more important. And we will have also then interaction with you. So check check the EMPA website for more information about the Multiphysics Hub. All right, as this is as far as it goes for the Multiphysics Channel introduction and the Multiphysics Hub as well. I want to show you now more something practical about modeling. And that is post, a post-processing tweak. So this is the console environment that you see here. You have, let's say, a time-dependent study that goes from zero to 150 seconds. And you're writing a result every two seconds. So in that case, you will have so many result files. And you want to plot them, you want to scroll, you plot, you scroll, you click and plot and scroll, you see where this is going. The best way to post-process such a large amount of files is by doing an animation or taking a time average. But there is also another, another tool you can do or you can use. And this is what I'm going to show you now. It is the WIFSOL operator. It seriously boosts your post-processing skills because the WIFSOL operator can access any solution, anywhere, and at any time. So for the WIFSOL operator to work, you need to indicate first the solution store. In that case, which you see here is the solution one. Then you indicate which variable you want to plot. That can be a temperature, that can be a velocity field, whatever. And then you say where it should be, the index. So if you have a time dependent study, for example, you want to set this variable or this uh, argument int index as a set val t60, for example, that means it evaluates the time or the, the solution at t 60 seconds. What you gain from this is that you have nice looking visuals. So this is as far as for the theory, we will go now for a hands-on session on the WIFSOL operator. And for that, oh, for that, I want to show you now this model. This is a model I already I have ready here. This is a, a cavity. This cavity is filled with a PCM. 
A PCM is a phase change material. The sp special thing about phase change materials is that they release a lot of latent heat during the melting or during the solidification. And here you can study actually how the, the, bond, the, the interface between molten material and the, the solid part develops. So this one is filled with that material and it is a time dependent study. I have so many solutions and when I click through the solutions, you see that the, the interface between those two, blue is solid, red is molten. So in the red, in the red uh, zone, you also have streamlines, of course, because of natural convection. And the interface bends. So it makes a bit of a curve. At the beginning, it starts like, uh, it's like developing as a straight line and then more and more it becomes curved, right? Okay, so if I do an animation for this, very nice, you can see how it develops over time, no problem. But let's say you want to go for a publication with that and you want to have some nice looking visuals. Uh, one way could be, for example, that you uh, make here some screenshots with this tool here, and then you copy it into PowerPoint or somewhere else, and then you paste them together. Yeah, different time steps, like a series of the, how the interface develops. But this is now where the WIFSOL operator comes into play. So first of all, I will duplicate this this solution here and I just take away the streamline and even the contour, I don't need that right now to show what I want to do, delete them, right? Good, and here is uh, the surface. The surface is represented by that variable fat.t. It's a time, it's a temperature dependent variable. Uh, it, it acts the value zero, between zero and one, depending on is it molten or is it not molten or is it something in between? So in between is right the interface. So I want to have two of those surfaces. So I duplicate the surface itself as well. And then I put them next to each other and I do that with a deformation feature. So I use a constant deformation of about the same size of the cavity itself. And in the Y component, I don't have any deformation. The scaling factor should be one. Okay, so now I have two images. You look at uh, how I defined this. So I have here this deformation and I use the X component, uh, change the value and the zero, zero for the Y component. All right. So when I have these two, those two cavities together and I keep clicking through my solution store and the uh, time steps, the different times I was writing a solution. You see that they develop pretty much, uh, not pretty much, I mean, they are identical. They develop identical. Good. All right. Now I want to show this side at one time and this side at another time. And this is where I use the WIFSOL operator. So the WIFSOL operator will now override all the other settings. And with the solo operator, I use solution one, then uh, apply the, the variable I want to, to plot. So in that case, theta t, and I set the value at t equals um, 30 seconds. Good. So now you see it's already changing the left picture. So when I keep clicking through my results, the left picture remains fixed at one time step and at the right side, it changes. So I want to change the right side as well. I copy, I copy this, okay. All right, good. And here I say I want to plot it at 140 seconds. So that's almost towards the end when the the whole domain is almost fully molten, fully liquid in that, in that sense. And now I can continue clicking through my solution, but nothing happens, right? The WIFSOL operator has overridden, has overridden all the other settings of this uh, plot group. Of course, one way could be that you set this data set here. I mean, look at how it's defined. Just as in the slide, you have the WIFSOL operator, then I have the solution store, then I use the variable and where it should, it should be, right? 
this is how it's done. Just like uh, there is also another possibility to do, that, to do that if you have the data set here set to none and then you change here and you say, okay, I change here to solution one and you sort of allocate for every surface a different time, then it, it, also, it also would work that way. But you see, even if I keep clicking around here, uh, it remains fixed. So this is a really nice feature when, for example, you want to have a graph or a graphics or a, just a visual, a window that never changes. You can do it that way. And that's also a neat way to export afterwards, of course, without the grid here, export the picture afterwards and paste it somewhere else where you need it. So that's, that's the feature of the Wifsel operator. If you want to pimp your post-processing a bit, uh, I recommend you have a look at it. And yeah, maybe also give us some feedback. What do you think about it? Okay, so we continue now. This was the, the Wifsel operator. It's a very neat trick and uh, very useful as well. This episode is already going towards the end. So the highlights of this episode were to introduce you to this new format. So keep checking regularly. Invitations will be sent as well. The next episode is on the 12th of November. So you're very invited to join there as well. The videos are recorded and put online. So there you can check, check if there's something useful for your own modeling as well. And so that you can become a real real uh, full-blooded modeler as we are and the take-home message is that uh, the whistle operator maybe you haven't heard of it yet maybe you haven't used it yet but uh, i encourage you have a look at it i even use the whistle operator not only during the post-processing stage but also for active modeling for example when you want to couple together two parametric sweeps uh, uh, which are located in two separate studies so for one study you have the parametric sweep and you want to run the second study for every item that was in that parametric sweep variable you can couple those two with a whistle operator and the running variable as well so that works very very neatly all right now it's your turn we are looking for people who have experience or want to share their knowledge in comsol in ansys in Python, whatever you use for modeling, MATLAB, Abacus, OpenFoam, just bring it on. Even if you have some post-processing that you did, uh, let's say with a different tool, R or whatever it is, we are looking always for good contribution. I would encourage you to join, connect, show what you do, share your knowledge and contribute to the Multiphysics channel. There you see my email address, just contact me and we will see where we can fit your research topic. We are looking for research topics that are in structure mechanics, in fluid flow, in, well, anywhere where we need multiphysical couplings. Good. And another thing, uh, advertisement, two of my colleagues will have events, will host these events, computational statistics and simulation and sensing at EMPA. I encourage you to have a look at it. Here you see the flyer in November and December. It's going to be a blast. All right. Thank you very much and make sure to tune in again on the 12th of November.